I'm once again addressing the fact with empirical evidence and pro football focused data analysis that the Seattle Seahawks brass and John Snyder Pete Carroll have done a horrendous job drafting and developing the offensive linemen they've drafted. Great early on as a team, terrible offensive linemen. This should finally refute and put an end to this field goals author, Ken Arthur and John Gilbert, these incessant guys that view it as a common misconception. Okay, The facts of this YouTube will totally refute any of these little abstract ideas that they have. Okay, Let's take a look at what Ken had to say in his, in his article. Once again, addressing the misconception that the Seahawks couldn't properly develop the offensive lineman they drafted. Wrong! This is what the writer wrote in to ask. It seems to be the worst position as far as prospect development goes. Is it all on the previous offensive line coach? We seem to be able to pick guys in later rounds for other positions and develop contributors, but seemingly not so much on the offensive line. Nature of the position that later round OL prospects are all duds. Ding, 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 ding. And then Ken comes back with his wrong statement again. This is not to call out the reader or question. It's a common misconception, but I do believe that it's a misconception and one that I'm afraid I'm a little tired of answering. I don't know what has to be done to get over this gigantic hill because I've written countless articles, tweets debunking this myth. So has John Snyder and it never goes away. It never goes away because you never debunked it and it's not a myth. I've got all the empirical evidence and the facts here and you've never brought one piece of evidence to the table. So one of the reasons why I don't really read field goals anymore. I spent my time on this because I was feeling ill and it popped up on my phone under the Google site. So here goes. Greatest back seven in NFL history was drafted between 2010 and 2012. All exceeded expectations on here. Not one offensive lineman exceeded expectations. Chancellor, fifth round. Maxwell, sixth round. Sherman, fifth round. K.J. Wright, fourth round. Even Earl Thomas in the first round of the 14th pick exceeded expectations. Jeremy Lane, sixth round, exceeded expectations. Wagner, second round, and then Russell Wilson. No offensive lineman there because it was garbage. We were able to develop all of these defensive players to build a Super Bowl caliber team. We never did with offensive linemen. Let's go on to 2013-2014. These two drafts really hurt the Seahawks. 2013-14. 20 guys drafted. No offensive linemen exceeded expectations. In fact, nobody exceeded expectations in 2013-2014. And our offensive line just got bad. So by the time 2015-16 hit around, we were the worst offensive linemen rated by Pro Football Focus in the National Football League. The other year, we were 30th. We'll take a look at it. But look at these numbers in 13 and 14. Nobody panned out. That's the biggest problem. Let's look at 2015 to 2017 on who exceeded expectations and was developed. Chris Carson, seventh round. Jerron Reed, second round. Frank Clark, Tyler Lockett. Offensive linemen, we drafted seven. Not one exceeded expectations. Not one has done anything in the National Football League. And those three, these three years have caused us now to have to go trade for a Dwayne Brown and sign old farts like Ayupati, and Fluker, okay? We have two guys that play out of all these drafts, and they're both two of the worst at their positions. Justin Britt and who is Jermaine Ifedi, who we did not sign for his fifth year. Okay, take a look at the 15 guys that we drafted, offensive line, 2010 to 2017. Okun was the only one that's pretty much decent out of this, and he had as many... Pro Bowls with the San Diego Chargers in a couple years, and he did with the Seattle Seahawks. Okay? Carpenter Moffitt bust. Sweezy, you don't even need to throw in there. He's a dog. Yeah, he was a seventh round pick. 2013, 2014 was horrendous with Justin Britt. Talk about the worst pick. 2015, we passed on the best guard that was drafted after Terry Poole and before Glowinski in the National Football League. 2017 was just horrendous, and we'll get into this. 15 guys, nobody developed out of this 15. So what is Ken's hypothesis on his field goals website? A misconception that the Seahawks couldn't properly develop the offensive linemen they've drafted? Wrong. We just seen 15 guys were drafted 
Okung may have been the best one of the list, but he was the sixth player taken in the first round, had one Pro Bowl for the Seahawks, had as many with the Chargers. We did not develop any of these guys to contribute on the offensive line. Okay? While we are shown that the other positions, just the writer said, we found other positions and developed contributors. In fact, those other positions are going to be Hall of Fame players. Here's Pro Football Focus's ratings for the offensive linemen, 1 through 25. These are the 25. Just put a couple names down. David Bakhtiari, fourth round, the second best rated tackle, was drafted in the same draft that Britt, who's a 54.3 trash city at a center, and he never was a tackle. Okay, Same draft of 2014. There's three other guys, centers, that play Britt's position that are in the top 19. Okay, and Britt's one of the highest paid centers. There were players to pick. So not only do we can't draft and develop, we can't pick them. Shaq Mason, we're going to get into Shaq Mason right in a minute. He's seventh best. 2015 is in the fourth round, we were looking at interior offensive linemen to draft. So Ken talks about he believes that his stance has the most evidence. He had no evidence. Okay. So yes, Ken, I am showing you with empirical measurable evidence okay let's take a look at some of the 2014 centers that went that are in the top 19 pro football focus matt paredes broncos lindsley packers linder jaguars we drafted Britt with the 64th pick he's the 29th rated nfl center and his cap hit is over eight million dollars a year below average 29th center ranked center These three guys in the same draft after Britt are in the top 20 of all offensive linemen in the National Football League. We not only couldn't draft, we couldn't develop. We put Brent at tackle, guard, center. Britt had one really good year. Big deal, okay? The 2015 draft is a real killer. Like I said, we're sitting there at the 130th pick if you look at this chart. Seahawks are on the clock. We also have the 134th pick. We're looking at interior offensive linemen, okay? We drafted Terry Poole at 130. The next pick, the number one rated guard in the National Football League in 2018 by Pro Football Focus, Shaq Mason, right guard. Who does he go to? The Patriots. That is the difference in the little things that coaching and being able to find that guard that you can develop. Seahawks didn't develop Terry Poole. Then with the 134th pick, we were looking at guards. We went with Glowinski. Didn't develop him. In fact, he's now developing in Indianapolis to be a good player and got a contract extension. Okay? So that goes totally 100% against what Ken Arthur has incessantly been talking about. Are you starting to see this now, Ken, that we weren't? 15 offensive linemen drafted all underperformed, and we're showing you that there was years that they they were staring at players they couldn't pick or develop. Let's look at 2017, which is a total disaster. 2017 draft, we were drafting 26th. We moved down with the Falcons, okay? And we picked up a third and a seventh. We picked up Delano Hill and Chris Carson. We're sitting in the 31st spot, needing an offensive tackle, okay? What do the Seahawks do? They get cute and dr- drop down into the second round, who we ended up getting Malik McDowell that never played anything. And guess who goes with the next pick to the Saints? The number one rated tackle, Ryan Ramchick of the whole NFL in 2017 as a rookie. Okay, He played both right and left tackle, and we needed a tackle. And we passed on him to drop down to get cute to do all this other stuff with Malik. Okay? Horrendous mistake. And I know that sounds 2020, but let's look at what got worse. Not only did we draft, not only did we pass on Ramchick, who was the sixth rated player in 2018, we drafted Pochick. Okay? And the reason why is this versatility that Seattle likes that I've never agreed with. He can play guard, he can play center, he can play right tackle, but he can't play any of them. Okay, Deion Dawkins, left tackle for the Bills, went at pick 63 right after that. He's the number 39th tackle, at least. Above average, got a 69 grade, which is good. Pochick has done at 45.9, which is like 
ungodly terrible. Look who went in the 64th pick. Carolina was lucky, picked up the right tackle, Taylor Moton. Moton's the number 16th rated tackle, National Football League, two years in. And we had a chance to get him too. So now that we passed on Ramchick, we can't draft and develop offensive linemen. That's the whole point of all this. I don't care all the smoke and mirrors you want to do. John Snyder and Pete Carroll done a fantastic job with this organization. But the offensive linemen, which is the key crux of what we're talking about here, they've been 0 for 15, okay? And they've had opportunities to draft fantastic players. If they had just gotten done anything and picked up, can you imagine if they stayed at 31 and picked up Ramchick and and picked up instead of Pochick and drafted Moton? Can you imagine if we had our left tackle and right tackle coming out of the 2017 draft, how stud the Seahawks would be moving forward? build the defense, get a couple interior guys on the offensive line, this team would be light to your head. We make too many mistakes in that area. And these are more examples. Ken Arthur, you should be ashamed of your incessant ranting that it's all a misconception. It's not a misconception. Let's take a look where the Seahawks have ranked the data analysis by Pro Football Focus. They do a really good job of detailing players and total units on the offensive line. 2011, we were ranked 29th in the National Football League, okay? 2012, we were ranked 20th. And yes, Unger had a good season, but he was not drafted by this organization. 2013, again, interior guys, ranked 27th. 2014, we were ranked 19th. And look at Justin Britt, minus 18.5, total trash. When you start making so many mistakes, this is where it ends up. 2015, we were ranked 30th in the National Football League. 2016, we were dead last. 32 out of 32 teams. Problem is, we couldn't develop players. 2016, you know, Mark Lewinsky was the 63rd ranked player at his position. Terry Poole wasn't even on the team. And Shaq Mason with the Patriots now is the number one rated guard in the National Football League and just got a five-year, $50 million extension. 2017, we ranked 27th. Jermaine Ifedi's struggles have continued as he allowed a pressure in every game and at least three pressures in 10 games. Furthermore, Ifedi was called for 19 penalties in 16 games, by far the most among all players. Center Justin Britt also took a step back in 2017, following a promising 2016. The two guys on offensive line, we took first round, second round, and they both step backs are way below average in the National Football League. We can't draft them. We can't develop them. Worst part is, look at 2018. We ranked 19th. Right above that, it was Carolina. Star of the show was none other than last year's second-round pick, Taylor Moton, who allowed only four combined sacks and hits all season. And they were and Taylor was drafted after we took Ethan Pochick with the 58th pick. He can barely get on the field because he stinks. And the 2018 ranking of 19th is great, but look at it. it was having Dwayne Brown on the blind side for a full year played a big role, but they, we, they, Seattle, also got a career year from DJ Fluker, who allowed only nine pressures in 10 games at right guard. Two guys that we didn't draft and develop. We picked DJ Fluker off the scrap heap because he knew our offensive line coach, and we had to trade for Dwayne Brown in October of 2017. And why? Because we didn't draft Ryan Ramchick that we should have. And we couldn't develop Ethan Pochick, and we passed on Taylor Moton. It's a comedy of errors, okay? Like I said, Pete and John have done a great job, but to even act like Ken Arthur's talking about it's a misconception, it's not a misconception, Ken, or John. It's the facts. 15 offensive linemen taken, zero exceeded expectations, empirical data with my eyes, data analysis by Pro Football Focus. There is nothing more that you need to see, but you're going to see a little bit more. More of your article. Here's some evidence that is constantly ignored and unaddressed when people disparage John Schneider, Tom Cable, and Pete Carroll and the offensive linemen from 2010 on. Blah, 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 blah. Russell Okung, dude, going into his 10th NFL season, a rare accomplishment. He was the sixth pick, and he has many Pro Bowls with the Chargers as he had in Seattle. He never lived up to his hype. 
Max Unger wasn't even drafted by this team, okay? It has nothing to do with it. That's totally moot. James Carpenter, the 25th pick, he's a bust. And even his college coach, Nick Saban, laughed at us for taking him in round one, okay? So I don't know what you're trying to do with talking about those three guys. Let's, yeah, James Carpenter, first round bust for the Seattle Seahawks. Pro Football Focus 2016, right there. He actually improved when he went to the Jets. So what does that say? It goes against your point. He didn't develop with Seattle. He was terrible on a bus with Seattle. He actually improved when he went elsewhere. Okay? 2013. The fact that Ryan Seymour and Michael Bowie played in NFL games is somewhat impressive. That's not impressive. You're so full of beep. 2014, they drafted Justin Britt at the end of round two, which I showed you was a mistake. David Bakhtiari is is second best offensive lineman in the National Football League. Three centers were drafted after Justin Britt that are in the top 20 of rankings of pro football focus offensive linemen. But now you say Justin Britt, he's good? He's one of the highest paid centers? He's not good. He's below average. He's the 29th center. I consider him terrible, but I don't want to show hyperbole. But you calling him good just shows that you are not in tune with the National Football League. Then drafted Garrett Scott in the sixth round, turned out a heart condition. What are you going to do? Whatever, dude. It's just more moot garbage stuff that you're trying to throw out there that is not evidence. You have not given any evidence or facts or anything on this. None. This is the guy, Justin Britt, you call good. Three centers went after him or in the top 19. And then Bakhtiari, the offensive tackle, Britt was drafted as the right tackle. He's below average. He's not, he's not good. Look at where good is. It's subjective. It's homerism. It's not being in tune with the actual National Football League and how players on the offensive line are rated. Let me tell you, 0 for 15, okay, is what Snyder and Carroll are. 0 for 15. Let's see what you had to say about Glowinski. Now well paid and starting for the Colts. Yeah, because the Colts are developing him. Even in Seattle, he was fined. No, Glowinski wasn't fine. He was the 63rd ranked player at his position league-wide per PFF. Dude, you're you're so full of lies, man. You're saying Glowinski was fine in Seattle. He wasn't fine in Seattle. I got facts here. You want empirical evidence and facts? Giving them to you. You said Britt was good. Britt isn't good. He's a 29th ranked center. He's overpaid at $8 million cap hit. Stop! Want more of your article? Joey Hunt in round six is on the team. Started a game last year and looked good at center. Started a game at center. Dude, you got sixth round centers that are like top of the 20s of all offensive linemen. Kelsey for the Eagles, okay? Center draft in the sixth round. Joey Hunt is not good. Then you've got Ethan Puchik in the second round of 2017. You already know what I talked about that draft, 2017. Passing on Ramchick. And then you got Moton and Dion right after we drafted Pochick that are starting tackles in National Football League playing well? What else do you say here? And that's where I'll end things on reminders of what Seattle's drafting history and development of offensive linemen actually looks like when you ignore the narrative instead of the facts. Dude, you had no facts. I brought all the facts that squashed your incessant ranting about the Seahawks being doing a misconception that they haven't done a horrendous job. Dude, it's the worst job in the National Football League. 15 picks and not one of them exceeded expectation. It's one of the reasons why this team won one Super Bowl and went to two and didn't win the second one is because the offensive line was so bad. Combine that with some other factors, but it was. It was the 32nd and the 30th ranked. It's the reason why we lost to Carolina and Carolina that first half. We gave up 31 points defense. Offensive line couldn't move a thing against the Panthers. Had a tough time against Minnesota. We lost games because the offensive line couldn't do diddly poo. Let's look at this trash again. Horrendous offensive line selections. Britt, Ifedi, Pochick that are with the Seahawks right now, all below average. All of them drafted first and second round investments that we've gotten nothing out of. They're part of the development issue that we're trying to talk to you and let you know and ask questions for, and you act like it's a misconception. Boo on you. Throw in a little J.R. Sweezy, too, because he sucked and had ex- didn't have expectations anyway. So don't even say because he was seventh-round pick and he played a little bit for us. He was any good. 71st-rated guard. He sucked. Look at the ratings that he had with us the first go-around before he went to Tampa Bay. Terrible. Now back to your article again, okay? This is what you have to say. 
Not to come down hard on anyone, not without the singular intention of being direct and to the point that the Seahawks' history offensive lineman development is so highly misrepresented and misunderstood. John Snyder and Pete Carroll's issues on the offensive line over the years had nothing to do with who they drafted and everything to do with when they drafted them, how much. Dude, what are you talking about, man? I've just shown you over and over. You're totally wrong, okay? My eyes, my empirical evidence, the data, everything refutes everything that you have. Look at the capital that we've spent, too, from 2010 to 2017. Three first-round selections of five first-round picks that we've had that Pete Carroll and John Snyder had to 2017, three went the offensive lineman. Two second-round selections, two third-round selections, two fourth, three sixth, three seventh. That is too much capital to go to 0 for 15. And again, I keep harping on this incessantly. The trade in 2017 for Dwayne Brown would have been unnecessary if we had just stood pat we were right at and taken Ryan Ramchick or even had Taylor Moton at the right tackle. But we had to give up a third rounder in 2018 and, and, and a second rounder in 2019 for Dwayne Brown, who's aging. We did get back a fifth in 2018, but that's even more draft capital on top of the stuff that we gave away. We have three first rounders and two second rounders. We still have two second rounders and a first rounder on the roster that are worthless. They're worthless. Ifedi, Britt, and Pochick are worthless, dude. Do you want to see what good drafting looks like? Okay, right here. The greatest back seven was drafted between 2010 and 2012. Okay, not one offensive lineman, 0 for 15 total. These are the players. This is what the writer was talking about when he said, we seem to be able to pick guys in later rounds for other positions and develop contributors, but seemingly not so much on the offensive line. How can you not see this, Ken and Mr. Gilbert? It's staring you in the face, okay? I pounded you guys with a two by four. You better figure this out. It's been a problem. 0 for 15. Look at how we developed all these other players. We never developed one offensive lineman 